In this video, we'll be discussing the application of the below elbow pop in the management of a Coney's fracture. We will also be discussing the care of the pop, its complications, and the safety measures that can be employed to avoid them. We will do this by answering the following questions. What is a Coney's fracture? How to apply a below elbow pop to treat a Coney's fracture? How to take care of a pop after its application? And what is compartment syndrome? The Coney's fracture is a transverse fracture of the distal radius with dorsal displacement. The patient is usually an older woman with osteoporosis who gives a history of falling on her outstretched hands. On examination, the fracture is tender and swollen with a genifrog deformity. On x-ray, the radius is fractured at the cortical cancellous junction about 2 cm from the wrist. Often, the ulnar stalag is also fractured. Usually, the distal fragment is shifted and tilted both dorsally and towards the radial side. In some cases, the fracture may be impacted or commented. Plaster of Paris is a material used in orthopedics in the management of fractures to immobilize and stabilize the fracture to prevent pain and deformity when allowing patients to be mobile. Advantages of a pop is that it allows for easy molding and thus contours to the limb and is adequately rigid to allow for immobilization of the fracture. The disadvantage is that the setting of the pop material is by an exothermic reaction which could result in thermal burns. A cast may also cause itching, ulceration and maceration with prolonged application. Proper application technique and adequate padding will help prevent some of the material used in this video will be gloves, two aprons, webrow cotton roll of 5 to 10 cm under padding, four individually wrapped plaster of Paris roll of 5 to 10 cm, a bucket with water at or below room temperature, approximately 24 degrees Celsius. Before we begin the procedure, the doctor needs to wash their hands, put on an apron and gloves. In this video, the doctor has already done so. Expose the patient and remove any jewelry. In this video, the patient is fully exposed and the patient has no jewelry on. Examine the patient for wounds and neovascular status. For screening of the radial nerve, Extend the wrist and the small veins and check for sensation in the dorsal thumb space. For screening of the middle nerve, check for sensation on the tip of the index finger. Also, ask the patient to press the index finger against the thumb and the doctor must try to separate them. For screening of the other nerve, ask the patient to abduct their fingers while resisting closer and check for sensation on the tip of the pinky. Displaced fractures must be reduced under anesthesia, for which we prefer something that acts fast, such as ketamine and medazolam. This must be done in a place with a fully stopped resuscitation trauma. The hand is grasped and traction is applied in the length of the bone to disimpact the fragment. The distal fragment is then pushed into place by pressing on the dorsum. The wrist is then hyperextended to accentuate the deformity and the wrist is then, is then moder moderately flexed and armor deviated to 45 degrees. To apply the pump, Unroll the padding circumferentially around the limb to cover the area below the elbow that will be under the plaster. When applying the padding, there must be a 50% overlap of the padding and make sure that all the bony prominences are covered well. Immerse the first row of plaster of Paris in water and hold it in until the bubbles disappear. Drain it until it starts dripping, but do not drain it out. Apply the first layer of plaster circumferentially around the limb, starting dorsally and progressing proximally, making sure that the plaster layer also has 50% overlap. When applying the plaster, 
He showed that the distal palmar crease and the knuckles or the MCPs are not covered by the plaster, allowing flexion of the digits. The joints at each end of the cast must be left free to move during the period of the casting. Avoid extending the cast too close to the elbow anteriorly, which will prevent elbow flexion. Leave a rim of padding when putting the first layer, which will be folded in the second layer. With the second row, start proximally and progress distally, ensuring that you fold the padding and cover it with the second padding. When applying the plaster, ensure that you soothe it out with the palm of your hands and not fingers to prevent indenting of the cast. To ensure stability, use a total of four plasters of Paris. For this video, we only use two. To stabilize the reduction, three point pressure is applied as shown in the video. One hand is placed on the radial styloid, the other in the middle of the arm, and the other at the elbow. After finishing the molding, Ensure that you clean the patient adequately and ask the patient to flex their fingers and thumb to ensure adequate movement of the joints. Lastly, we will discuss the complications of the pop. The most important of this is compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is a ischemia of muscles due to inadequate perfusion as a result of perfusion pressure to the limb being exceeded by compartment pressure of the limb. It can lead to death of the limb and amputation if not diagnosed and treated adequately. It is therefore important to diagnose it early. Compartment syndrome presents firstly with increasing pain that is out of proportion to the injury, pain of unpassive movement of the muscle group, and very hard muscle on our patient. Paresthesia, paralysis, pallor, and pulses follow soon as the limb starts to deteriorate.